Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad that you're with us to stay curious. Today, we're going to talk about the shuttles of the month of August. We have gone on a little T-minus 30-second uh, delay here, and we're finally rolling out off the pad with a UCAC photograph there. Mark and Tom UCAC, great partners of the American Space Museum. Uh, this is the launch of one of the shuttles of the month of August. We'll tell you which one here in just a minute. But uh, we had some technical difficulties. Things just go streamingly smooth for a while. And then we have a hiccup. Marty Winkle, how are you? Thank you for solving that with Trekkie Techie Jessica Galloway as I get my clothing looking better here. Marty, I think the super full moon has something to do with this. What do you think? You sent me the, the picture of it. It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> All over again. I swear, and those of our friends that have been inside of our American Space Museum's Stay Curious Studios know that it's a uh, high wire act, I'll call it, every time we hit the, the show live here. But we love doing it, and uh, we're on today. Uh, on, we want to move everybody to YouTube eventually. We'll see how that works. Something messed up with our Facebook link, and I forgot my password, uh, you know, Anybody else have this password problem? I hate passwords. I understand them, but my God, uh, give me. Let me just use one password forever. I have to change it once in a while, and it's is a nightmare. And of course, where I have my passwords is at my home desk, not my office desk. So Jessica Galloway, thank you for getting us on today. We'll see how this goes, and uh, Marty's doing some fine tuning there, but. Uh, we want to very give a big shout out thank you to this guy mr winston scott uh who gave us a wonderful program yesterday we got marty did people like it oh yeah people loved it we I, unofficially i think we set a record on nice show great show we love winston it was it was really a really good show Thank you. Yeah, Marty, I wanted you to share that. Thanks for sharing that. And it means a lot to us uh, that put our heart and soul in this for uh, into our fourth year now, 860-some episodes. But uh, a real nice, uh, forgot to, uh, Marty, it's in the printer over there. Would you hand me that? Uh, I'm going to read this off. Winston Scott did an excellent job. And we didn't talk as much about him being an astronaut, Marty, did we? We talked about him uh, being a man and a great man that he is. Uh, love him to death, and uh, one of the comments that was uh, given by three-minute flight instructor, Marty, this is the one of the best comments we've ever gotten. The three-minute flight instructor on YouTube says, so proud of this venue and the, quote, common talk interviews conducted with true American heroes like Mr. Scott. So thank you, three-minute instructor. Uh, uh, Karen Conklin, our executive director, showed me that. That's what we've strived for is... Uh, a conversation not an interview and we certainly had that with Winston as we talked about probably more about as much about jazz and his trumpet playing as we did his spacewalking but uh, what a great guy he's in charge of the astronauts at this Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex and uh, Winston uh, holding your hand out there if you want to if you appreciated Winston's interview and want to contribute to our nonprofit Marty down at the bottom show him where that that thanks button is it's right off my it's right there right above my thumb right there yep you hit that thanks button and then your face pops up there or my face of my Facebook and it automatically starts at a two dollar donation and Marty show him the bar there in the middle that has little pegs on it that you go just up a little bit two dollars then the color changes to the yellow up a little higher there yeah right there there that's a that's a twenty dollar donation all the way up to five hundred dollar donations okay uh and uh, uh so we appreciate anything we get from two to four to in any amount but uh this is how our nonprofit museum uh, uh flies by a lot of grants and in-kind donations uh, and from private people. We're working with Spay Curious to 
be more impactful in the space community so that we are attractive to the big boys that give hundreds of thousands of dollars to institutions like ours. We are not benefit of anybody like that right now. So like I said, Winston's holding his hand out for us. Uh, they give two bucks, uh, 20 bucks, uh, 30 50 you can put the amount in there all the way up to 500 bucks automatically by hitting that blue button so uh thank you all for supporting us the way you do and uh you know we're going to talk about two uh, other people here that really give us a lot of support but we've got a happy birthday and that's what we like doing on stay curious is issuing some happy birthdays out there this is one of them days marty i'm going to put my hat on it's right there within sight there we go happy birthday because i'm going to be wearing this hat tomorrow for sure joan elizabeth miller higginbotham was born august 3rd 1964 in chicago illinois and she is 59 years old today she was a kennedy space center electrical engineer who became a nasa astronaut she flew aboard space shuttle discovery on sts 116 that would be uh, around, where's my shuttle flag there? My shuttle things, are, there she is in space. Uh, talked to Winston about her, uh, and he's, I, I was surprised, Marty, when she was at the Kings Visitors Complex, how uh, small she is. She's a very, very petite lady. I'll bet she wasn't five foot three. 116 was December 2006, so the 33rd flight of Discovery. And, um, but uh, she uh, worked at KSC as a payload electrical engineer and within six months become the lead orbiter experiment uh, person, OEX, on OV-102, which was Columbia. And we'll talk to Terry White about that next time we get her in here. Marty, a question. Another picture of Joan yeah, good, there. Good question from Dave Stange. When you donate that way, do you get 100% of the donations? Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, I believe that we do as a nonprofit, and uh, we'll find out about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we do. Some of us have given five, ten dollars to prime the pump to see how it works. So I haven't talked to our accounting department. I'll ride the elevator over there, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that. But no, good question, Dave. We'll need to check. And we'll dig into that in there. Uh, we'll get back with them on there because they're going to be hearing us hawk that a little bit. Uh, so, but thanks, Marty. Good question, Dave, and hope you're enjoying a uh, beautiful August up there in, in Michigan. It's one of the more beautiful times of the year uh, to be up there if you don't like snow. And those I understand a lot of you do like snow, and that's cool, too. Joan Higginbotham, uh, she would have gone to space more, uh, but didn't want to hang around for this, the interlude between uh, getting back up to space off U.S. soil. So uh, she took a job uh, uh, in, the, in the industry, and we'd love to see her back out to Space Center again. So the shuttles of the month of April, of August. A little bit rattled after our start here, Marty. Sorry about that. But August has got some very interesting missions here and has got a couple people on board that we've had the pleasure of met. In fact, three astronauts. And... Um, you know, we meet these astronauts out at the uh, Kenny Space Center where there's one every day. Some of them are busy and some of them take a shine to you and some of them uh, just, you know, have other things to do. So we're grateful for those that really hook into us and allow us to interview them and so forth. Uh, and, of course, Winston Scott's got a great interview. Check that out on YouTube. Uh, and he's now the astronaut chief out there. But August, by the numbers is the first night launch and the first night landing, which would be of the nine shuttles. That's right, STS-8, the last one launched of the month on September 30th, no, August 30th, 1983, okay. Uh, we're going to see some shots from uh, the UCF brothers on that. Nine shuttles, so I love spreading them out, and when you see the A, the D, the C up there, on the first row behind them, that's the orbiter. And there are five discovery launches of the nine, all right? And then coincidentally, each of the others just had one launch. Uh, Challenger was STS-8 there at the end. So discovery, of course, ended up being the workhorse with 39 shuttle launches. The Hubble 
two upgrades were deployed from it. Uh, the return to space uh, was uh, uh, twice in its uh, stead there. Uh, and Discovery uh, flew a total of 252 crew. And it was in space for exactly a year, 365 days total. Well, in the month of August, 74 days uh, is the accumulated time between all these nine shuttles, 53 crew members, six women. Uh, so a little over 10% of the crew members were women. Three of these flights were pre-1986 flights of the, uh, that include the Challenger. Three pre-Challenger flights, Fish, five of the nine missions deployed satellites, which was going to be the workhorse uh, and make money for the shuttle in our country. And three ISS hard hat missions. Those would be, um, let's see, that'd be one, uh, one uh, 85, no, not 85, 118, um, 128, and 105 would be the hard hat missions. All had to be after 99. So that was construction of space station and two international space station crew exchanges and one Department of Defense. I'd have to kill you to tell you of uh, defending our country mission, and that'd be STS-28. And we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. Um, but the first launch of shuttles of the month was STS-43, which I like calling Richard Petty for the great stock car drivers number on his STP. And this is left to right Shannon Lucid, uh, who's in her 80s. And then we've got Mike Baker. And Mike Baker, we interviewed and we'll have an that we'll show that uh, in a couple weeks uh, on a Friday or Monday to give Marty and me a long weekend. Uh, in this and but we know gotten to know Mike pretty good. He's been the astronaut du jour a few times out there. He's coming back in a couple weeks. Then uh, Jim Adamson's in the center, two flights to space. I've had the privilege of having been in a lunch group of old timers where Jim attends. But right now he's um, in the New York area where uh, he grew up, uh, Snowbird. So we look forward to seeing Jim down here in uh, October, November. John Blaha's the commander, and uh, I've gotten to meet John. And then uh, Dave Lowe, and Dave Lowe passed away of cancer. He had four flights. Uh, but this is a, uh, a UCAC Brothers photograph on the tarmac, their T-38 jet there in the background. This is the patch that uh, honors the Mercury capsule, is in the outline of the Mercury capsule. And Marty and I were standing in line to get an autograph with Jim, uh, with Mike Baker. And uh, more than that, just say hi to him, invite him to dinner which he accepted. And lo and behold, in the line with us is a woman that Marty says, are you, uh, you know, a space geek or you see, or a space fan? She goes, well, I'm a, as, as, what did she tell, tell you tell a story, Marty? I said, I forget the whole story, but she said, uh, he said, no, I'm not a space geek. My dad was an astronaut. So I was thinking it's probably a shuttle astronaut. Yeah, my dad was an astronaut. She was in her yeah. young. Yeah. So I said, you know, what's her dad's name? Cooper, was it? It was Cooper, right? Was it Mark? Yeah, Cooper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We Cooper. met Colleen Cooper yeah. standing in line, yeah. and she had a letter that Blaha sent to her dad with this space flown patch on it, uh, 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 saying, uh, you know, we want you to have this. We honored you all and stuff like that. So that was really cool, and Mike liked that. So uh, if you're ever at the Space Coast and you, and you do go to the Space Center, be sure and get in the astronaut encounter line uh, at noon at the gift shop or uh, at 4 o'clock underneath Atlantis. Uh, it's just a, a, they're just fun, and these guys are great. Guys and girls are really great. So uh, the UCAC brothers were there. Tom got the um, walkout. Uh, there's Blaha leading uh, Baker and uh, um, Jim Adamson there. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate both their friendships. Uh, Adamson was on our show. Uh, and uh, actually, I posted the day that he was on the show. Both these guys I put on a Facebook post when they were uh, when Jim was on our program. It was last March. And he flew a Department of Defense mission in August also. We're going to see that in a minute. So uniquely, he flew twice in the month of August, both of his flights. Talking about Jim Adamson there with the mustache. West Pointer, 
sharpshooter. He even had his own gun company with his dad, I understand, for a while. Well, there's our backdrop. Let's just, just drop that out and look at, absorb the beautiful power of what, seven million pounds of thrust coming off the, the pad uh, there as UCX have their uh, remote cameras there. Again, you've got the steam is the cloud on, on, on this direction. Uh, to uh, the left there on the screen. To the right is the dirtier cloud of the solid rocket boosters. You still have steam now. Yeah, sure. You got steam in both directions, most likely, but they're uh, directed to separate each other there. And uh, boys, that take a toll on it there. Thanks for pointing that out, Marty. There's Mike Baker. And uh, uh, after looking at myself with the uh, Winston Scott, I may have to go shave, Marty, as my receding forehead's getting very receding. I've got my glasses on top of my head. Uh, you got something to say about Mike? We've been around him a little bit, Marty. Well, he's like a lot of the astronauts. He's very nice uh, gentleman, um, easy to talk to, no airs about him. Just a, just a pleasant, pleasant yeah. person. That's a good way to put it, Marty. No airs about him, all right? He's not full of himself. He appreciates what he's done in life, uh, uh, which is four missions, twice a pilot, twice a commander. There he is. Hook him horns. I've got my fingers up there because he's a University of Texas graduate, uh, a uh, military uh, uh, Air, uh, Navy guy, a military brat so much, so to speak. And you're going to enjoy that conversation with Mike. Stay healthy, Mike. <laughs> I want to go up and see my grandbaby in Tennessee and, and uh, get a Friday or Monday off to air you there. So there he is in front of our shuttle. That shuttle, by the way, was built for the Nixon administration to show, was built in the 1970s to show people what they were thinking about doing with a reusable spacecraft on there. So great guy, Mike Baker, as is Jim Adamson. The, he flew twice uh, on STS-28. Uh, and we'll talk about in a minute. Of course, 43, the mission we're talking about now, deployed the TDRS satellite. All right. And then my uh, Adamson, who was the first uh, CEO of United Space Alliance, all right, he actually helped form that with um, Mike McCulley, who we're going to celebrate Mike's birthday tomorrow, and uh, Bruce uh, Melnick. Uh, two astronauts that told me, and the three astronauts told me how they, over a bottle of scotch, Marty, formed united space alliance to take the shuttle in its last 10 years of management um, let's go this way there's our interview uh in march uh, 2022 with uh, mr jim adamson there and uh interesting marty we had a talk this man on his department of defense mission was talking about the dod missions in 1988 89 90 okay there was seven of them during the Reagan administration, all right, hang loose. I'm going to tell you what maybe the consequence of that was. The first email from space, Jim here on Stay Curious, emailed with Shannon Lucid to Marsha Ivins. This, they said, hello, Earth. Greetings from the STS-43 crew. This is the first Apple link from space. Having a great time. Wish you were here. Send cryo and RCS, exclamation point. Hasta la vista, baby. We'll be back. That sounds like Jim there. So uh, that was done on August 9th, 1991. The first email from outer space. 32 years ago. And they called it Apple Link, you Apple fans out there. So, Marty, you got an Apple. What are you looking up there, buddy? Nothing. We're going to take a picture. Oh, oh, okay. Here, I'll let you take it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and now you you know it on Stay Curious, okay? I did not know that. Yeah, that's what we're for here, to obscure knowledge that that could be a Jeopardy question there. What, who, what shuttle, you know, who sent the first email from space? They'll so, never get it. There you go. No one would get it? No, no, they never pick astronomy or space. Those are the last columns usually uh, picked on Jeopardy. Uh, they want world literature or, or, or you know, foreign affairs. Well, I was looking back at our shuttles of the month there. Well, the, the beautiful one in the middle. I'm going to read that one. Where's my, my book of uh, here? I'm going to read you two of these shuttle monikers here. Uh, monikers uh, for better. Uh, that uh, Of course, they're patches and decals. 
Uh, let's go to 85 in the patch book because uh, that's so colorful. And I, we don't know any of the astronauts about it. So this one, uh, of course, was launched um, in August 7th, 1997. The patch reflects the broad range of science and engineering payloads. Primary objectives are to measure chemical cons uh, constituents in Earth's atmosphere with a free-flying satellite and to test flight a Japanese robotic arm for the International Space Station. The satellite was Krista SPA No. 2, which stands for Cryogenic Infrared Spectrometers and Telescopes for the Atmospheres. Glad you asked. Krista is the acronym. It is shown on the right, all right, in orbit. Uh, looks like the dreidel, I think, pointing its three infrared telescopes at the Earth's atmosphere. The high inclination of orbit is shown as a yellow band over Earth's northern latitudes. In the payload bay is Japanese National Space Development Agency's manipulator flight demonstration. They later become known as JAXA, Japanese Space Agency. Jupiter and three stars represent sources of ultraviolet energy in the universe. Comet Hale-Bopp, visible, visible from Earth during STS-85, is shown at the top right. The left side symbolizes daytime operations over Earth's northern hemisphere and solar science objectives of several payloads. Well, a lot of a lot of what they call Easter eggs hidden in there. And 85, this is one of the first ones to allow the crew number to be put on it. Uh, that kind of started back in the with the 80s group uh, in there. Uh, a few others have it, but they tried to shy away from that. So now you know, the, then there's the crew. Um, the commander was Kurt Brown. Uh, he had four or five flights, and Kent Rominger was a pilot, Jan Davis, Robert Kerbeam, Steve Robinson, and Bernard Turgvison from uh, Canada was the payload specialist. Well, here's a top secret one that, like they say, we'd have to kill you if we, uh, Jim wouldn't tell me much about this, Jim Adamson, except in his code, Jim Adamson says there was a lot of capabilities launched during this three-year period when Department of Defense missions were launched, okay? And he turned me on to this. 19, uh, the 28 was the, uh, the, uh, the, the second. It started with STS-27 in 1988, and then 89 was the 28, and then 33 in 89, 36 in 1990, 38 in 1990, and then in 1991, 39. And in between that was only astronomy missions, Gamma Ray Observatory, Astro-1, Hubble, all right, LDEF retrieval in a satellite, and Galileo and Magellan, all right. All, so what Jim hinted at, look and see what happened in human history during the Reagan administration. The, the uh, communist wall in uh, Berlin came down, all right, in the insinuation is, is a direct result of these Department of Defense flights, which were in the wheelhouse time of President Reagan's Star Wars Defense Initiative System. So we'll talk more about that uh, next month or next week when we talk about a uh, little bit about this. I've asked Jim to come on and talk more when he's in town. He doesn't like doing that because, um, you know, it's, it's top secret stuff and it was very vital to the nation's security and uh we respect that of jim adams so but look at that beautiful beautiful patch how american can you get that eel coming down with his claws you know uh and i guess that's the florida peninsula upside down and not north uh, korea that he's trying to grab their party upside down of course but here's another patch that we'll read off to you there uh this is a big crew two four six seven i'm going up there I met Mastrocchio on the bottom, Italian name there, I slaughter every time. He went to space on this mission and also a uh, Soyuz, uh, uh, he's pretty tall too. He was at your Grumman event, Marty, Mastrocchio there. Let me get the, um, the patch of West, yes, 118, uh, commanded by Scott Kelly and, and pilot uh, Charlie Hobal. 
the patch represents Space Shuttle Endeavor on its mission to help complete the assembly of the International Space Station and symbolizes the pursuit of knowledge through space exploration. On the patch, the top of the gold astronaut symbol overlays the starboard S5 truss segment, highlighting its installation during the mission. That's the gray outline up there at the top. The flame of knowledge represents the importance of education and honors teachers and students everywhere. And that's on the left-hand side. And there's actual patches of that for the teacher in space program. The seven white stars and the red maple leaf signify the American and Canadian crews flying aboard Endeavour. And of course, you see the Endeavour vapor trails, the American flag wrapping around the astronaut pin there, which is three vectors in the star up to space. Also on there, Barbara Morgan was a mission specialist. Uh, we've met her, Marty. Uh, should have grabbed a picture of her. Uh, and uh, uh, Richard uh, Mastrochio, Tracy Caldwell, and Benjamin Drew are the mission specialist spacewalkers on that mission. So STS 118, one of our August shuttles. All right. Okay, that didn't forward, Marty. Oh, I got to take it out of this, maybe. Oh, my, my buttons aren't working. My buttons aren't working. Yeah, Jessica's on. She's sharing. That might be slowing us down. Okay. Okay, we maybe have another slowing thing here as we're going to talk next on our shuttles of the month. Uh, STS... Um, Another snafu today in Stay Curious Land. 105 is another construction mission that had uh, uh, Scott Horowitz, Commander Rick Stutko. And it's not advancing. I'm live, though. You're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. All right. But we're hung up here on this slide. So uh, when we get to 105, it was an 11 day mission. And it took up the Leonardo payload, and we'll probably be talking about this with Mikey Haddad. You can't advance them, and I can't advance them. Okay, and if Jessica's online, Jessica, if you're online, you're sharing, you may want to stop sharing. Okay. If she was sharing, that was missing. Oh, okay. All right, thank you, Trekkie Techies, trying to figure out what our anomalies were there. Uh, there's another, uh, you see the Russian flag in the space shuttle uh, vapors there, the American flag vapors, space shuttle vapors, the American flag there, their contrail, if you will. It, it uh, symbolizes the exchange of Expedition 2 and 3, the two expeditions. Three gold stars represent the U.S. commanded Expedition 3 crew as they journey into space. Two gold stars near the descending orbiter represent the Russian commanded uh, Expedition 2 crew coming home. And their name the, uh, going up or on the, the bottom, uh, 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 the crew exchanges there are the tag on the bottom. The orbiters form a circle representing the crew rotation in our continuous presence in space aboard the ISS. And uh, so the crew members of the Discovery are along the border, Horowitz, Stucco, uh, Forrester and Barry and Strutko is uh, one of the pilots uh, for the Unity ship of the Virgin Galactic suborbital fleet. So two, four, six, eight, ten astronauts involved in that, but they only went up seven up, seven down on there. Well, to have a little bit of fun, uh, Eagle, Covey, Fisher, Van Hoften was the next flight going up. And that was uh, Discovery, 51I. And that was a SATCOM satellite in 1985 doing what the shuttle was supposed to do, uh, uh, take uh, payloads to, to space. And then the next one in line by it being launched, not in historical date, is 128 that uh, took up uh, Nicole Stott and brought back Tim Copra on the... Uh, uh, International Space Station. Now, Stott's name is on there because she was the passenger going up, and she's there at the very bottom there. Nicole is a great friend of the American Space Museum. This mission 
in uh, August 28th was the launch in 2009. We'll be reminding that of her Uber up to the International Space Station. Uh, and uh, Keith uh, Hernandez, Keith Hernandez, uh, Jose Hernandez was on board as a mission specialist. And there's Marty with Jose. And uh, Marty, Jose, uh, we're hoping to do what with Jose? If you'd let people know. He's got some product he'd like to sell us. Oh, besides his books, he has wine. Yes, he's got some and vineyards. He has his own vineyard in California. And uh, his story is a migrant worker family becomes an astronaut. And his it's, it's a really touching, uh, uh, really tear-jerking story he talks about as a youth where he told his dad, I want to be an astronaut at age 10 or uh, something like that. Right, Marty? age 10 or something like that, and his dad yeah. said, go in the kitchen. And uh, he said, his dad, there's only three things that happened in the kitchen, and only one of them was good, that's that you ate, <laughs> all right? Uh, the other is that you got blessed out, and I guess one of them was bad. The other one was you did your homework or something right. in there. Yeah. You did your homework, you ate, or the other one was bad, you got blessed out by your dad. But no, his dad said, took him seriously, right, Marty? Go ahead. Yeah, but he also, he already had two things done. He did his homework, and they had dinner, uh -huh. so he knew it had to be bad. Right, there you go. But it wasn't. Tell him what his dad said, Marty. It's a great story, if you remember. Oh, gosh, there was, was five things that he had to do. He had to identify his goal, what he wants to do, and where he wants to go, where he is now, how is he going to get there, and education, uh, was paramount. I forget how he worded that. Mm -hmm. And then he added one of his own, and that was perseverance. Because he yes. tried out for an astronaut, I think, six, seven, eight times. Mm -hmm. He persevered and he got selected. Jose Hernandez, they're a great guy. Uh, yeah, Marty, I'm so impressed that, you know, his dad just bought into it and said, if you're going to do that, you have to exceed and excel in everything. Okay. And it's going to be hard work. And uh, to have a father tell you that at that young age, I don't have that experience. Those of you that do, Just I'm going to I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say you're blessed. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, so you know, like I said, it's an amazing father son story, and having your father having your back at a young age, and then he succeeds. So. Uh, we're, we're, with our technical things going on, one person saying the gain on our mic is too high. So ask every, anyone else if they're having a, an issue there. And I'm, we haven't touched the gain on any of this stuff. That's on this side. And uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll phase it down a little bit, though, Marty. Yeah, and that's what Jessica was doing. She logged on to just, check uh, just a head there. gain. And, and uh, it looked good. We're looking forward to Jose coming back. Uh, his eyes lit up when uh, astronaut, astronaut Wrangler... Uh, Nick Thomas suggested uh, with me that we might have a, and Marty, that we might have a uh, wine tasting party here, as he's got his own winery. I believe it's Luna Wineries, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The word Luna is in that. Just go to Jose Hernandez Wineries, and I'm sure it'll come up there. Of course, it's in uh, California on there. So um, uh, the, what, another one of our shuttles of the month, uh, FTS-128, that Ubered up. Uh, to, uh, Nicole Stott to the International Space Station. All right. So, of course, we can't do without a picture of Nicole. Nikki's there with the one and only Carlton Bailey and Thodzi. All right. A Godzilla, don't sue us, re uh, replica there uh, with the Atlanta Braves. This is a mistaken human being, Carlton Bailey, isn't he, Marty? Not only, not only Godzilla, but he's like an Atlanta Braves fan. <laughs> in there all his life he loves them braves since they first broke on to uh tbs uh decades ago on there marty's a, a yankees fan i like the yankees too but uh i'm trying to get back into baseball but there's nicole stott out there thank you cb for the pictures you took the whole menagerie out there last night there's fodzy and another godzilla and i'm not sure what the toucan and the, the little raccoon there's about but uh, they help him take pictures like this of the launch last night of a, an important uh, Echo Star satellite, Intelsat satellite, 
uh, why this is important, Marty, is this is this satellite is the last, I think, of five that fill in the gaps on the 5G network that many of us use on our cellular systems. Uh, CB, another streak shot. Um, not as easy as it looks, folks. It took me about 10 shots to, to perfect this technique because uh, a lot of it breaks some of the discipline rules of photography to pull it off, like a low ISO and a long exposure. But uh, Carlton Bailey, thank you for sharing your pictures. And he got right up the, the uh, business end of those nine Merlin rocket, rocket engines as they're uh, taking this probe up to about 25 miles. And then for over the 200th time, they landed the first stage on a barge out in space. So we always look forward to uh, Carlton Bailey's artwork and his form of his photography. Thank you, Carlton. See you soon. And another, the next, the last of nine launches in the month of August is uh, this one, 51D, a very early 1984 launch. In fact, so early, let me see how many in the program that was. Uh, nine, ten, that's the 12th of the overall program, the first launch of Discovery, maiden flight, which I've, I've, I've asked uh, Terry White, our orbital processing chief that those are just as hair raising as anything an, an inaugural maiden flight of a brand new spaceship anything could go wrong but of course none ever did on the maiden flights of our five orbiters but uh that has our friend on it charlie walker henry hartsfeld was the commander mike coates the pilot uh, uh holly resnick and Mullane, real popular astronauts uh on there and of course charlie walker and there's Charlie with Anita Truex, our office manager slash merchandise uh, manager. And uh, Charlie came in uh, just kind of checking out the place like he does when he's on the Space Coast doing an astronaut encounter. And our floors were being redone. And uh, he's got the, the Schro uh, Sch Schroeder's cat walks into a bar and and doesn't he's got upside down there schroeder's cat is a psychological uh, tool used uh, for some uh, uh, thinking type of uh, thought experiments and quizzes schroeder's cat so there is we're going to be seeing uh, him here soon here, here next week all right and i dropped charlie uh charlie walker there a note and, and uh, wanted to know when we can take him out to dinner again charlie's had these three missions we did a Stay Curious program with him. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I forgot to pull the date up on that. When was that, Marty? Six months ago? Back in the spring? When you went to lunch? Yeah. Yeah. Like two months ago. Yeah, or something like two months ago. He's the first true commercial astronaut. He did electrophoresis on his three missions, an experiment that uh, uh, uses electricity to separate uh, molecules out of liquids. I think is a way to explain it. 41D, we're talking about a mission of August. Then he went up in April 85 on 51D and then December of 85. And I told him, you had three missions within uh, 15 months of each other. What a lucky guy, you know. Uh, but he was a working for the company. Uh, forget which company. He's a Purdue educated Purdue not at the university there. And uh, 20 days in space for Charlie Walker, and and uh, maybe we'll get him behind the uh, Stay Curious Studios in here again, and uh, talk more about uh, 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 electrophoresis uh, in general, and uh, his what he's doing now specifically. And finally, the last of nine launches of the shuttle era in the month of August was uh, STS-8. Uh, of course, uh, on this one we had. Um, uh, Commander Richard Truly, we have his handprints in the American Space Museum. Dan Bradenstein was the pilot. Dale Gardner uh, was the astronaut there. Uh, uh, and uh, G uh, Guy Bluford, Guillaume Bluford, uh, was on this mission, the first time an African-American had gone to space. And William Thornton, who is a real asset to the medical uh things going on in space. He, uh, Thornton pioneered the exercise routines to be done on the shuttle and then later on the ISS and uh, has some patents on the 
some of the equipment being used. Uh, Thornton, very important guy, was also part of the Skylabs meet uh, thing. So the uh, launch of all, October there, August, and there is STS-8. Uh, a photograph not taken by the UCX, but still a cool photograph. I really like that picture of Dale Gardner there on the left. Uh, Guy Bluford, his first of four trips to space. William Thornton, I think this is his uh, uh, third trip. Not sure about that. You got uh, then um, Dan Brandenstein and the most tight challenge there, Marty. That is Richard Truly. All right. A Navy man on there. And here's the walkout. What a cool walkout that uh, Tom Usiak captured. Brandon Steen has got his hand out there because Tommy told me just an hour ago that it was raining. It was raining pretty hard for the walkout to the the uh, the bird out there. And uh, there's Guy Bluford looking right at you. And uh, Dale Gardner there on the right. And then uh, is that truly in the back back there? You see the other cameraman there. Yeah, Truly's there in there. But a very cool picture there, particularly with, with Guy Blueford so excited to go to space. Notice, folks, they just have flight crew suits on. Just blue flight crew suits. Nothing to keep you uh, pressurized in any way or any kind of... There was a backpack with air on it, a tank at the back of your seat. And the helmets were uh, not even as good as NASCAR drivers wore. The big blast off at night, the first night launch. Uh, looks like it was uh, uh, right after uh, midnight, 12.40 a.m. on September 5th, 1995, all right? And uh, the first night launch, people, photographers like Tom Usiak and his brother Mark, uh, uh, who took these photos, um, they uh, were guessing at their exposures, okay? Uh, the film they used back then, do you go with a 400 ISO that was one of the fastest at the time? Steve Nolte is one of their consultants that helped them uh, rig up the automatic uh, uh, remote cameras uh, over the water here, the, 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 the barge out there. But they're really guessing what the exposure could be on that. And uh, got, nailed it beautifully there, Tom. And look at that shot there. Uh, a little bit hot on the SRBs, okay. So the next time they might go out instead of using F8 or F, or probably at like F22, maybe they would go to F32 because I'm sure they had a tiny opening on their lens. Marty, you had a comment or question? You had a comment from Tom Usiak. He said SCS 41D was the first time the shuttle main engines shut down on the pad. Oh, abort. that's true. That's right. Uh, they had the abort out there. And uh, thanks for reminding us, reminding us of that. We uh, everyone always reminds Charlie Walker of that, and he always and he talks about it in his uh, his encounter talk, and he calls it uh, the biggest pucker factor of his life. Uh, everything was puckered up, he said. So, <laughs> but you nailed that shot there, guys. And then uh, tribute to the three amigos there. Okay, Carlton Bailey there. Uh, with his Japanese Godzilla shirt on, of course, Mark Usiak in the middle, and Tommy, his big brother there. When we was young, folks, out there. But uh, thank them a lot for what they've done for the American Space Museum and sharing their wonderful work and also promoting our museum as well as bringing us some great people like Chris Cowley. And uh, on and on we had Ellie in space on the show because of Carlton. So, Marty, thank you very much. I'm going to show uh, Winston Scott again and thank Dave Stenge and Dave Forrest and Connie McDaniels watching, Tom Usiak, Carlton Bailey, Kiki Zab... Oh, Zab <laughs> looks like Kiki Badass is watching. Kiki's a badass. The way you wrote it, Marty, it looked like a uh, a uh, Arabic name. <laughs> Is that Jessica? Yeah, that's Jessica. That's that's Jessica's nickname, Kiki Badass. Uh, Cynthia Rossi, Carlton Bailey is on here twice. 
Uh, uh, so good. <laughs> we, we got CV on there. Winston Scott, God bless you and all you stand for, buddy. You're awesome. Again, hit that little button down there that says thanks. You could give us two bucks. You could give us 20 bucks. You could give us 500 bucks and be a super thank you fan if you enjoy the content on the American Space Museum's Stay Curious program. Please tell your friends. And it's a way that a lot of people are making money on YouTube with this. So why shouldn't we support our American Space Museum? So we had some technical problems. Kiki's a badass. Thank you for uh, being there for us. Marty and I, we will try to solve these off air and wind it up again tomorrow. And uh, it's Future Friday. We're going to tell you about a future probe that's going to land on the moon in a week that you might not know anything about and look at some other future companies that what they've been doing in the last month uh flying their uh, low earth payloads uh, and and uh populating the orbits of earth with satellites that we need to keep going and pushing into the 21st century so until tomorrow on friday i'm mark marquette saying we can't wait to see you again to bridge the space between us.